What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out Sketch Plus, a brand new extension from the guys over at Mindsight Studios that contains a number of commonly used tools for SketchUp that aren't contained inside of the base version. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can download Sketch Plus by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash sketch plus. And um, what this is gonna contain is this is gonna contain a number of different tools. I think they're up to 30 right now. Um, there's probably gonna be more in the future of different things that you, or different tools that this adds to SketchUp. So let's take a look at some of the tools that are contained inside this extension. So first off, we're, um, you're gonna get a number of different toolbars. You're gonna get components. Um, there's a move toolbar. There's a materials toolbar. Um, so a lot of different toolbars in here. And I just we're going to take a look at the tools. So first off, the components toolbar is going to come with a number of tools designed to help you work with components. So first off, there's a component finder that's going to allow you to manage your component libraries inside of SketchUp. So you can use this in order to find folders and then bring models into your SketchUp model just by clicking on them. So you can click and then you can place the model inside of SketchUp just with a single click. So that can be really helpful for managing all of your different components. All right, so the second tool is the change axes tool. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to quickly change the axes of an object inside of SketchUp. So if I click right here, for example, notice how this gives you a number of different preset locations for where you can set the object axes. So what I can do is I can just mouse over this and then find a location. And what you could do is you could just tap the control key in order to find the bottom center because that's a common location where you wanna put your model axes. So once I click, I can just hit the escape key. And then if I click in here, notice that it quickly set the model axes to this point. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more in a minute when we look at the path copy tool. So the replace component tool is gonna allow you to replace objects inside of SketchUp. So if I select these objects right here, then I click on the button for replace component. What that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to click on a different component and it's going to replace them with that component. And so you can use this to really quickly swap out things like furniture or other things like that. One thing to note about this is notice how these jumped around. That's because the model axes were in a different location. Well, if you were to take these objects and set their components or set their axes to the central point, and then you were to use the replace tool, notice how they stayed in the same location because the models had the same axis location for each one of them. So the mirror tool is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna allow you to select a group or a component. So if I was to make this a group and then mirror it along a selected axis. So notice how this does lock to the different axes um, with your keyboard like this. So then if I was to select this axis, notice how you could use this in order to mirror objects really quickly. So then let's say I wanted to mirror these up and down like this. We could just select this in order to do that. So you can see how mirroring things can be a lot faster with this tool. Um, we're coming up on some of my favorite tools inside of the components section. So the first is the Smart Array tool. What the Smart Array tool is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to basically create multiple copies of an object. And when you create those copies, it's gonna copy any changes that you make between those objects. So for example, right now we have two components in here that make up railings. Well, if I was to select that railing and then activate Smart Array, and then click on this one right here. Notice what that's gonna do is that's going to go into a live mode where it copies any movement or scale to the new um, to the new objects that are in here. So what that allows us to do is create things like stairs really quickly, or if we wanted to create something where there was like a progressive scale inward, right? So let's say we took this object, made it a group, made another copy of it, and scaled it down a little bit <clears throat> like this. Well, we could use that tool in order to create recurring copies in here, just like this. What I really like about that is, A, you can type in a number of copies over here, but I like the way that this shows you what your copies are going to look like before you create them. So you can see where they're gonna go inside of your model. And so if we wanted to go the other way, right? So we could select this as our base and then click. Then we could just use this to create bigger copies down instead of up 
It's like this. So in addition, there's a great path copy tool in here as well. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to create a curved path or really any kind of path and take an object and copy it along that path. All you have to do is select this, activate the tool, and then click on whatever you wanna place on here. And what I like about this is this one is going to allow you to create copies based on your mouse location like this. So instead of you having to type in different values again and again and again, you can just move your mouse and just see where these copies are going to be. So if you tap the shift key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna rotate your objects to follow along the path. Um, or if you don't want that, then you can tap the shift key again. If you tap the control key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna use your max spacing. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you set a number of copies between the end point and your first point. So you can use the control key to do that. Or if you tap the alt key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna start your copies in a different direction over here. So if you tap the alt key, notice how when we first start off, it's gonna start creating copies from this first point. If you tap alt again, it's gonna start by creating the copies from the point over here. So if I was to click, notice how it created these copies really quickly. All right, so I've downloaded some of these low poly trees from the SketchUp 3D warehouse. And so let's say that we wanted to randomly place them. So there's a few different things we could do. So the first thing is we could use the random spin tool. What that's gonna do is that's gonna randomize the rotation of these objects. So if I click, what they're doing is they're randomly rotating based on the axis location around the Z axis. So since these are all instances of the same component, what we could do is we could use the place axis tool in order to place the axis in the center. And what that should have done and it looks like it did, is that should have changed the axis location for all of these. But then we could use this in order to randomly rotate them. So all you have to do is just click right here. Notice if we didn't change that, there was also a tool um, by tapping control. That's gonna let us set if it spins about the bottom center or the local origin. But you can use this to add random rotation in here. The next tool is gonna allow you to add random scale. So that's gonna allow you to randomize the size these objects. Notice how you could type in a minimum maximum value, right? So if you wanted a bigger spread, you could type in like 0.25 comma 2 and hit the enter key. Or if you wanted it to be smaller, you could type in something like, um, you know, 0.75 comma 1.25. And that's going to set um, the scaling factor that's in here. So now when we run this, just by clicking, that's going to randomize our scale. So there's also a tool in here for randomizing position. So let's say that we were to select these trees like this, and we wanted a little bit more randomization in here. So maybe what we'll do is we'll create a new example. So we'll use this tree. And so let's say you had a series of trees like this, and you were to select them. There's a tool in here for random position that's gonna allow you to set the position. And so that's gonna let us set a base object. So in this case, we'll use this tree right here, but then notice how you can set how wide you want the trees to go on the red axis. You can also set how wide you want them to go on the green axis, like this. And then if you wanted to do them vertically, you could do that as well. So if you wanted like an up down jitter, you could do that. So notice how that gave me an up and down in here. But that's a really quick way to randomly place these. It kind of reminds me of, um, to a certain degree, the uh, one of the vegetation place tools inside of Lumion. And so another thing that can be kind of frustrating is sometimes um, you'll get a model like this one that has stuff that's just like nested inside of groups, inside of groups, inside of groups, and you just have to like click a bunch to get into the raw geometry. Sometimes you just want to start over with an object. Well, this last tool in the components section is the explode plus tool. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to select the tool then click on an object and it's going to explode everything down to its individual parts. So now there's no more groups in this section. So there's also a toolbar inside of Sketch Plus for um, adding movement options in here. So you can see how there's a number of different movement options. We'll just run through them real quick. So first off, there's the nudge tool, which allows you to use the keyboard in order to move things around. And so left, right is gonna set your movement on the red axis. Up or down is gonna set your movement on the green axis. And then 
if you want to move it up and down on the blue axis, you can hold shift and use the up or down keys. And notice how this is moving very slowly right now. Well, you can adjust your move increment just by typing in a new value. So if I type in a value of 12 and hit the enter key, and now use the arrow keys, I can use this in order to nudge things up and down really quickly. So there's a tool that you can use in order to move an object to the model axes. So if you have something that you just want to bring back to center, you can just click on the move to origin and then click on an object and it's going to move that to your model origin. So if there's ever anything you need to quickly move to the origin, there's a tool to do that. There's also an alignment tool. And so what the alignment tool is going to do is it's going to allow you to align different objects. So if I select these, for example, activate the align tool, that's going to give you this bounding box and a number of different things you can click on. And so notice how if I mouse over a point, for example, it's going to align all the objects based on the endpoint. So you can use this to align these based on a central location like this. You can use it to align things so that they're all um, flat. So that's a great use if you have some stuff that's kind of up and down and you want it all to be on the same plane, you can use this in order to do that. And so if you tap the control key, that's going to put you in center alignment mode, meaning it's going to align things based on the center of the bounding box rather than the object axes. The move to Z function is going to allow you to move a number of different objects to a certain Z location. So obviously you could move, use these to move something up or down just by moving your mouse, but you can also type in a value over here. So let's say for example that you wanted these to have a Z value of 6 inches. That would be 6 inches above the model axes. You just type in a value of 6 and hit the enter key, that's going to move these objects so that they're six inches above the origin. Um, or if you were to type in a value of zero and hit the enter key, it's going to put them a value of zero. So you can use this to really quickly set the up down of multiple different objects. And I'm pretty sure if we were to do this with objects that were at different heights, like this, right? So these are all at different heights and we'll just look at them from a front view. But if you were to select them all, click on move to Z and then type in a value of zero, that's going to move all of those objects to basically the level of the model origin. All right, so the drop plus function is going to allow you to drop a component or a group of components on something beneath the object. So if I was to select all of these trees, for example, activate drop plus, it's going to ask for a group or component to drop like this. So all I had to do was select these and then click on them in order to drop them down. So you can see I could use this to quickly create things that follow along complex terrain or other things like that. There's also a function over here to flatten objects to ground. So, for example, let's say we had this terrain right here and we had some areas that we wanted to flatten. So maybe like this area right here. Well, what you could do is you could click in order to drop this to ground. So you could just click on it and notice how it's going to take all of those and drop them down to the zero level. So you could also select all of your faces like this and then click on the button right here in order to flatten all of those to the ground just by clicking. So you can use this in order to flatten things out really quickly inside of SketchUp. All right, so another thing that can be kind of frustrating is trying to paint different materials um, that are nested inside of groups, right? So in order to get to various things inside of a model, in order to paint them, a lot of the time what you have to do is you have to click all the way into the model, like multiple levels deep, in order to paint objects in a group. But with the materials tool, what you can do is you can use the deep paint faces tool in order to paint things um, based on just mousing over them rather than having to click into that group or component. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to change the color of some of the trim in here. So maybe like a brown color or something like that. So what we can do is we can activate the deep paint faces tool and then we can mouse over an object and notice how this is finding the groups inside of the object. So for example, let's say that I wanted to place this. All I would have to do is click and notice how because these are all inside of a component, they're all changing with this. but we can use this in order to really quickly add different colors to different things just by selecting them and then clicking on objects inside of our model. So notice how we're able to deep paint these really quickly.
And so there's a number of different functions in there for that as well. So there's things like paint all matching or paint matching adjacent. So let's say we wanted to add more of a red color to our rails. So if we click on this, whoops, if we activate the tool and then click on this, notice how we're finding the individual faces in here. And if we click on this, it's just gonna paint an individual face. And I need to reselect a material. But if I click on this, it's gonna paint this red, right? But if I tap the control key for paint all matching adjacent, what that's gonna do is that's gonna paint them the adjacent faces inside of the model. You could also use the shift key to do paint all matching. So it's basically gonna find the things that match up with that object. So see how I can use this to quickly add different colors inside of my model. And so the tags tool set is gonna allow you to untag all objects or um, allow you to untag faces and edges. So if you do have a bunch of faces and edges that are on tags, this is gonna go through and find those and untag them, which is a great feature, um, as well as removing tags from groups and components. So you can use that in order to remove tags in case you have a bunch of those in there that you don't want. So the selection tools are going to give you options to do a lot of different things. So the first is there's an option for filter selection. Basically what that means is that means you can take a group of objects like this and then you can tell this what you want to filter for. So in this situation, for example, I want to filter for groups. So what I can do is inside the selection, I can click on the select only and it's going to go through and select only the things that are groups. In this case, I could set this to select components and it would select only the things that are components or I could also use this to filter for edges or faces. So for example, if I filtered for edges, what that's going to do is that's going to select only the edges on objects inside of your model. You could do the same thing with faces. So we could set this to select only faces in here and it'll do that. So it, it's really a great tool for filtering out those different things. There's a lot of different uses for this. Uh, you can also filter by tags or other things as well. So there's also tools in here to select based on a lasso. So you can click and drag in here in order to select different objects, or you can use the polygon lasso, which is just gonna do the same thing as the other lasso, but with a straight line like this. So I could use this to really quickly select just objects that I want in here. There's also a function in here which I'm super excited about, the deep select face. What that does is that allows you to mouse over group geometry and you can mouse over a face and you can click on it in order to get all the way to the face with a single click. There's a lot of times and I would love to have that tool. So the selection painter is interesting. What it does is it allows you to click and drag Across, an, across objects like this. And notice how anything you click and drag across, it's going to select. So I could see myself using this to pick up a bunch of edges or something like that inside of my model that I really needed. Um, it just gives you a little more fine control. There's also an option here to select all instances of a component. So in this case, for example, I have two of these boxes. Well, if I click on select all instances, it's gonna select all of those really quickly. Another example would be with my trees right here. I could click and select all instances of those trees really quickly. And this also remembers your previous selection. So you can use the back and forward in order to um, toggle back and forth between your old selections as well. And then finally, the draw tool set is gonna allow you to quickly draw shapes. So for example, you can draw a sphere based on a central point and then a radius. It's like this, either by clicking by drawing, you can also do the same thing with a triangle or a cone or a torus like this. So this adds those primitive tools that previously you needed to use the follow me tool in order to create. And then there's also an option in here to make faces. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to, if we were to come in here, Let's say we had something like this, but there were no faces in it, right? So we'll just filter our selection so that we only have the faces and we'll delete them out. And so with something like this, you you could come in here and, here and start drawing edges across this, but this would take a lot of time. Instead, what you could do is you could select this and then just click on the button for make faces and then click. And that's just gonna make all of the faces possible based on the edges that you have in your model. So I'd love to hear what you think about Sketch Plus in the comments down below. If you're interested in Sketch Plus, I will leave a link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.